The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. The Radio Memories Network welcomes you to the world of modern radio theater, an old medium revived for a new era through the Radio Memories Network. From the four corners of this world, there are more than 341 million people who speak English. This is the Society of the Ear, the Society of the Mind. Our voices are legion. Here we have the opportunity to spread stories through the theater of the mind all across the cyber byways and radial beacons. We are inclusive. We are eclectic. We are collective. We are the Sonic Society. Welcome to another meeting of the Sonic Society. I'm your host, Jack Ward. Each week we delve into the suspenseful and the sublime, the action-packed and the erudite. We look into masterpieces of audio cinema and some of the mayhem behind the sonic scenery. Membership is inclusive. You already have the best seat in the house. Music has a powerful draw in all our lives, and its importance seems to grow as the years pass. We purchase CDs of the music of movies as readily as the DVDs of the movies themselves. No less is the importance of music in radio drama. While there have been very successful series that have not utilized music, for the most part, modern radio drama depends upon it to cover the skeletal structure of an audio performance and make each contour seamless, beautiful. In this week's feature, music is very much the magic that enchants and beguiles the characters in our story. Texas Radio Theater's live show of Dragon Song begins in a moment. Also included in our meeting this week is an interview with Richard Froelich, architect and creator of the Texas Radio Theater Group. Another shout-out for all those interested in writing your own audio cinema scripts, and we begin to wrap up our run of Robots of the Company by Dream Realm Enterprises. But without further ado, listen carefully, for here there be dragons on the Sonic Society. Tonight, the Texas Radio Theater Company presents Dragon Song, written by D.B. Humphreys and directed by Luann Chapman. Go from us. My babies. Just a dream. Damn. Just a dream. Forget the dream, Lauren. Time to start a new life. It was just a nightmare, Lauren. Remember, it's all just an old nightmare. But it was so real. Nine dressed in robes, red robes, in a cave, chanting around a chain beast, lizard, or dragon. That's it, a dragon. And her babies, lost babies, lost babies. No, stop it, Lauren. Not the babies, not the babies. Get a hold of yourself, Lauren. It was just a bad dream. Mother, of course I knew it was you. You're punctual. I'm fine, Mother. Sure, I'm nervous about the magazine interview, but that's to be expected. Mother, I'll be fine. No, you don't have to come along. I want to do it myself. I'm a grown woman. No! Damn it! 
No, Mother, I just dropped the coffee pot on the floor. Damn it, glass is everywhere. I have to clean up this mess, and that's going to make me late. It's an hour drive to the city, you know. Sure, I'll come by afterwards. Yes, Mother, I promise. Love you, too. Bye. Damn that dream. Bevequa vermouth? Crazy. Watch out, Lauren girl. You don't want to lose your mind again. Once is enough. Thank you for calling Mother's Day magazine. If you know the extension of your party, please enter the number now. Lauren Mil- Miles, Miss Stein will see you now. Lauren, I'm very impressed with your photographs. Thank you, Miss Stein. The composition, the use of light. Do you make a day at the playground a comment on living itself? They're just pictures of children playing and mothers mothering. But underneath, Lauren, underneath, there's a wanting. Like this one here, the three children swinging. Two are in the foreground laughing and swinging even, but the third is at her apex on the back swing. Her childish face, set and determined to... Determined to what, Ms. Stein? I don't know. That's what's great about it, Lauren. I don't know. It makes me think. All your pictures are that way. For a beginner, you have surprising talent. Hardly a beginner, Ms. Stein. It was my major in college. And you said you hadn't picked up a camera since you were married after graduation. Yeah, that's true. Ten years without picking up a camera, you still have a sharp eye. <laughs> that's from being a mother. Anyone else would forget. Talent never forgets. True, some of your shots are amateur, but the ones that aren't, I'll buy them and I'll look at anything else you want to show me. Well, I, I don't know what to say, Miss Stein. <laughs> Just say... Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. And thank you, Lauren. Welcome to Mother's Day magazine. Mother? Mother? Mother, I did it! Mother, the magazine bought my pictures. Oh, Lauren, that's wonderful. Tell me about it, all about it. Well, like I told you, some of my portfolio shots were from my freshman year in high school. But the role that I took at the playground this summer, she loved it. I told you they were good. I told you you should have stayed with it. Mom, scold me all you want. I don't care. I love you no matter what. Mwah! Because we were both right. I'm good at something again, and I shouldn't have stopped. We're both right, and that makes me feel even freer. I'm me. Oh, thank God. This calls for a celebration. La Chez de la Lune. Oh, Mom, it's already 6.30. They must be booked. Well, when you date Le Chef, you get Le Perks. Oh, this is delicious. Well, it's salads for the next two weeks. Mother, I just made $2,500. Tonight is on me. It's the other cost of the meal, honey, the calories. Well, I plan to be up for an early morning jog. I think I'll take my camera this time. It's like I'm seeing different now. Sounds like a good idea, but won't it interrupt the run? You mean, will it interfere with the goal at hand? Just trying to interpret your excitement, dear. Mother, I'm not overly excited, or replacing guilt, or escaping into a false promise of the moment. I didn't say you were. No, but you're thinking it. And I don't blame you for that. Not after what's happened. I wasn't very dependable or believable, but I'm changed. You do believe me. Yes, this time, yes. I see it in your face. I can also see it in your work. You're moving on. That's what's important. That's why I've decided to stop the sessions. Now, Lauren... Mother, hear me out, please. For three years, other people have helped me interpret my feelings. It's time I do it for myself. I'll take what I've learned and fly on my own. That's not some new street term, is it? What? Fly on my own. I'm talking about independence, Mother. I see. Independence. Lauren, I'm glad that you want independence. Oh, honey, you're ready. I believe that in my heart, but please do it in small steps, not one big one. The first step is a big one, Mother. What about your medication? That's part of the session. No, I disagree. I can't let you do that. I've already done it. I'm paying for it. Not anymore. You're making a big mistake, Lauren. Please listen to me. I am, but I need to make this change. The medicine helps doesn't... you. It has, yes, but I've been gradually reducing the dosage myself without telling anyone. I wanted to see if it would work. 
I've been off the meds for a month now. Lauren, you know what can happen. But it hasn't. No mood swings, no side effects. Nothing, Mother, nothing has happened. It's been easy sailing. One month isn't enough to tell, dear. Actually, it's been two. Two? You're a sneaky child. Mother, I'm 38. You're a sneaky 38-year-old child. Oh, give me a break. No, I won't. You have a chance to really excel here, Lauren, and to be honest, I think it's your last one. Forgive me for saying this, but I don't want you to screw it up. I can't take it again. I can't afford it. I'm paying the tab now. I meant emotionally, Lauren. I can't help you pick up the pieces again. I don't have it in me. I have just enough energy to live what life I have left. That's why I disagree with your decision, because I won't be able to help you if it falls apart this time. I know it sounds selfish, and I'm sorry for that, but please don't put me in a position where I have to close the door on you. That would kill me. That would just kill me. Then I absolve you from your need to mom. That's easier said than done. I know. It hasn't been so long that I've forgotten what it's like. Then why would you say such a thing? Because you at least got to keep your child and see her bloom. See her learn to fly again. Consider that precious enough, regardless of the outcome. I do, Lauren. Well? Well, consider this. You're not the only one that lost. I still have a child I can lose again. Look at it from my view. You're all I have. What if you crash? Then you're absolved. Grow with me, Mother. Let go. You're wrong. Not this time, Mother. That's what's different. In my heart, I know I'm doing the right thing. Lauren, what are you doing here? Mary's photo shop is closed. Mary, they bought the pictures. <laughs> Oh, well, then let's celebrate. There's a new band at the cave. No, my mom already took me to Chez de la Lune. I'm stuffed. I really just wanted to get some film. Oh, Lauren. It's going to be a beautiful moon tonight, and I just... Mary's photo shop is closed. Mary, come on. It'll cost you... How much? A promise that you come with me to hear the new band. The men are cute and single. Most of them. All right, all right. Great, but we need to change clothes. You look like Miss Librarian. I didn't mean tonight. What? Next Friday, okay? I promise. I just really need some film. Uh-uh, you need a man. Oh, I had one for ten years. Oh, God, not again. And when you've had the best. Spare me, cousin. Just three rolls of film. Mm. You promise? Next Friday? Yes, I promise. I do, I do. Okay, I'm holding you to that. Make it four. Thirty-six each. Kodak Gold, too. What are you shooting this time? The full moon. I have an idea for a photo spread. I've been working on it for a while. It's been a secret project. A labor of love. Up on Conagher Hill? Well, it was a secret. How did you know? I saw you there last weekend. Why didn't you stop and say hi? I was involved. Oh, <laughs> no wonder you didn't say hey. Was he close to your age? Here's your film. The moon's rising. You better hurry. Thunderstorms are on the way. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I owe you one. Next Friday, 8 o'clock. You got it. In the shadow I hope I'm not disturbing you. I'm a photographer. I'm just here to take pictures of the moon. Photographer. New word. What means it, photographer? I take pictures. You know. What is that? Uh, my tripod. I put the thing on top. Like this, see? Oh, so you can click, click the moon, hmm? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a great one tonight. Next month better. Tonight, quiet moon, sad moon. So I think to it. Look how it lumbers up, burning yellow fat. Pale fire it has. Yeah, I see that too. Excuse me for a minute. I've just got to get this camera tightened down on the tripod. Mm. I need a new fastening clamp. This one's almost stripped. 
There. You mind me play? Please do. It was beautiful music. What's the name of it? Irina. Oh, I'm Lauren. Lauren. Hmm. But I think you misunderstood me. I meant, what's the name of your song? The title. Wish has no name. That's the title? No, that is truth. A wish has no name. I'm afraid I don't understand. Song is a wish to be home. I miss my home. Ah, I remember my first week at summer camp. I cried every day. I was so homesick. Homesick? I like new word. But after one phone call to my mother, I realized that she was still there, and I didn't feel so bad. Maybe you should try that. My mother dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe calling your father. I know Europe is long distance, but it might make you feel better. I only won, no family. Oh, from your accent, I thought you were one of the exchange students at the university. <laughs> no, I exchange, but not for student. I, how you say, uh, mm, what is word, banished? What did you call it? Banished. No, the other. Pavekwavamud? Does this word disturb you? No, I just... Never mind. Why did your country banish you? I was to be queen, but council forbade it. Queen? Yes, queen of Draconia. Oh, that's interesting. Clouds moving fast. I feel magic building. Magic? You mean storm? Yes, magic storm. <laughs> I'm curious. Where is this Draconia? There. You're pointing to the stars. Yes, there. <laughs> oh, I understand now. I understand very well. Clouds spell moon now. The magic storm comes. Hmm. Yeah, well, that finishes me for the night. Why you photograph the moon? Huh? Why you photograph the moon? Oh, photograph the moon? It's for a book of pictures. I'm going to call it Nightlight. But you think children. You have moon children, you think? No. I don't have any children. I'm like you, the only one. If you don't mind, I have to pack up my tripod now. Mm, I hurt you with memory. I ask forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. It's all right. By next moon, I will have children. In just a month? You don't even show. Show? You're not as large as one would be. Oh, I'm not Retete Gorgana. What? Fat with babies. No, but I will by next moon. Oh, good for you. Well, have a nice night. You might need to get inside. It's about to rain. <laughs> you doubt me. No, I believe that you believe that what you said. You think kindly to me, but doubt. Whatever. I see your think now. In this world, yes, it would be hard to believe. <laughs> In this world, many things are to believe for me, too. No magic. Except in sky. Mm, it's starting to rain. I have to go. Goodbye. Yes, Lauren. Farewell for now. Oh, it's the dream again. It's so real. A cave. No, figure now. A cavern. And those in red robes standing under torches, like some type of satanic ritual. Banish. Abort. <laughs> Yes? Lauren, this is Dr. Michelle. Oh, hello, Jan. We had an appointment today at 3. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Um, I must have slept through. What time is it? 5 o'clock. I must have slept all day. I worry when you miss your appointments. You've been doing so well. I'm sorry. I had a full night. I was celebrating. I sold my pictures. Wonderful. How about coming by tomorrow to talk about it? I have an opening at 2.30. Yeah, yeah, 2.30 is okay. I have to say, this is special treatment. Usually your secretary handles this. Well, you worked very hard on your recovery, and I wouldn't want to see you lose any ground. Uh-huh. Well, okay, Lauren? My mother called, didn't she? Uh, we spoke briefly. Oh. Lauren, remember. Yeah, yeah. She has my best interest at her. Good. So tomorrow? 2.30, right. And Lauren? Yeah? Congratulations on selling your photos. I believe in you. Thanks, Dr. Michelle. Goodbye. Lauren, why are you all sweaty? I jogged over here. The whole four blocks? No, I walked the last block. You should have started those aerobics classes with me. See, I have abs. Yeah, cousin, the whole town knows you have abs. Y'all are just jealous. You just moved it to your butt, girl. For that, you won't get your slides. Who were you with on Conagher Point last weekend? Here, take them. They're double exposed anyway. What? There's a shadow on the moon, see? Looks like your thumb. 
Here's the magnifying glass. See for yourself. Hmm. Oh, my God. It's a face. I just see a shadow. That's your thumb. No, it's a face. Don't you see? Long black hair and dark eyes. Oh, my God. It's her. Who's her? This young girl I met last night while I was taking pictures. She was dressed all in black, like those gothic girls at the university. I just see a thumb shadow, Lauren. She's in all of them. It can't be her in all of them. You're right. It can't be. It's a thumb shadow, cousin. Hmm, maybe. I gotta go. Lauren, you have that funny look again. Just put it on my tab. I'll see you tomorrow. Lauren! The moon's rising, cousin. I don't want to miss it. Hello, Lauren. How did you know it was me? I see your think, your dream. Your silhouette. Your face is on my pictures. To remember you of me. You put your face on my pictures? Yes. I see your think. You keep saying that. What does that mean? I see your think. I see your mind thoughts. Even your dream. I don't dream. Good Lord, why am I even up here? It was probably just a thumb shadow. I don't even know why I'm up here. Because we share a dream. I need you. You need help. That I do know. You need help, and I can't give it to you. Goodbye. I'm sorry, Lauren. Terra mi personica. I, I can't move my legs. Do not be afraid. Stay away from me. We are connected. Magic connects us. Don't come any closer. I need you, Lauren. Rina needs you. Feel my belly. No. Let go of my hand. Feel my belly. I see skin, but I feel scales and... Retete Gorgana. Something's moving underneath. Retete Gorgana. Retete Gorgana. With the next moon, I will give birth eight times. That's impossible. For this world to understand, yes. But watch now. I am not of this world. In my world, I am as normal as stars and moons. You're changing shape. In my world, Draconia... This has to be a nightmare. Your eyes are turning into... Killed my race. War. Begun by evil red priest. Your skin is turning into scales. I last of my kind. But the red priest couldn't kill me. You're growing into a... Dragon magic always leaves one of my kind alive. It became my duty to birth a new dragon race. But the red priest banished me here, hoping... That my magic and I would die. You have wings. Oh. Green and purple oh. wings. But they not know that I am Retete Gorgana, my only salvation. You're becoming a dragon. Not become, Lauren, but am dragon. Draconia, this is real. It's not a dream, but real. Oh, my God, this is real. Help me, Lauren. Help me. I am dying. My babies, they're dying. Hello, Lauren. I missed you again today, 2.30, remember? Please call me. I'll reschedule for Friday, 10 a.m. Hey, girl. What happened last night? You promised me a Friday night at the bar. Rich's friend was a dream. He still wants to meet you even though you did stand him up. He took one look at your picture and fell off his bar stool. I think Rich gave him your number. Don't pass this up. Believe me. I almost went home with him myself. Come by today and I'll tell you what Rich did to persuade me not to. <laughs> Lauren? Lauren, are you there? Lauren? Well, I just called to say hello. Agnes Jenkins said she saw you at the Super Value Store buying a lot of meat. Are you having a barbecue? I'll make the potato salad. Your Uncle Charles and Aunt Phaedra visited and left me two bushels of Idaho's. Call me. Kisses. More. This is the last of the three turkeys. And some of those roasts aren't quite thawed yet. Babies. Only one food. They do not care if it is thawed. What is wrong, Lauren? Why you look at me that way? Nothing. Is it because I am now dragon? No, I'm used to that. But can I be honest here? Yes, you saved my life. You helped me and my world's future. Yes, be honest. What is word uh, sugar on top? Please. Please, please. 
Okay, I, I don't mind you shedding on my couch. Actually, the scales are pretty, and after watching Martha Stewart this morning, I think I know what to do with them. And I don't mind that you sneezed and burned my kitchen drapes. We both agreed it was an accident. But, Rena, chew with your mouth closed, please. My mother always scalded me, too. Sorry. It's because you're eating your food too fast. And that isn't healthy for any mother or her babies, regardless of the species. You are like my mother. She always correct me to proper way of future queen. What was she like? Oh, she was silver green, powerful. Very, um, correct. You not say no to her. I learned after scolding. You mean scolding? <laughs> Scalding. But she loved me. She would sing to me dragon songs, carry me away to soft sleep. I miss her. Oh, sweetheart, here's a Kleenex, but don't... Blow. Sorry. That's all right. At least the meat is more thawed. No, I'm sorry for crying. I do not normally do this. Why can I not stop crying? I happy one moment, then said the next, and then, why is this happening to me? It's your hormones, dear. I guess it's the same for all mothers, human or dragon. Mood swings. I had them too, but my second child was the worst. I remember she used to always... Never mind. You speak of your moon children? You should finish eating. You keep running away from your think of them. That's thought on them, not think, and stop reading my mind. Why you keep running away from your thought on them? It's none of your business. Hmm. It's private. You know, personal. None of your business. I tell you private, personal, none of your business. I tell you I, Dragon. You needed to tell me. But, Rena, I went through three years of therapy to forget. I've talked all I want about the subject. They're dead, and it's dead. I have to move on with my life. But you sing my dragon song in your think, uh, thoughts. In the shadows of a dream, you wish for something more. Stop reading my mind or you can leave. I do not mean to hurt you. Uh, when time for birth comes, I need you. We must know each other, whole, no secrets. My magic is weak. I cannot stand up to lies. Why you only take pictures of moon and children at play? There's no way around this? No, I am sorry. If it hurts too much, I leave. Uh, I find someplace else. No, don't go. I'll tell you. It was a full moon night. My husband, three children, and I were driving to see my mother. A drunk driver swerved into our lane. Tom... My husband tried to get out of the way, but lost control of the van, and we flipped over. I was thrown clear. Why just me? I don't know. But the rest of them rolled with the van down the embankment. I remember coming to and crawling to them, pulling them out of the wreckage and screaming their names, screaming for them to wake up. Only my littlest, Alicia, opened her eyes. She was only three. She pointed to the full moon and said, Look, Mommy, it's Daddy and Christy and Dina with the man in the moon. And then she died, too. You take pictures to see them again, maybe. Maybe. Lauren, this is Dr. Michelle. Please call me. I'm very anxious to talk to you. Lauren? Lauren, are you there? Lauren! It's been a week now. Please call me. Did you have that barbecue? The reason I ask is that Jack Hansley said he saw you at Bennett's Wholesale Meat yesterday. Is this a new type of diet? Please call. Kisses. You're listening to the Sonic Society. We will continue with Dragon Song in a moment. Holy moly, Red Panda, what's that? It's an alert from the Sonic Society, Flying Squirrel. The Sonic Society? Are, are they superheroes like us? Kind of. The Sonic Society brings the very best in modern radio drama to the airwaves each and every week, including our own Red Panda adventures for Decoder Ring Theater. Gosh! Where do they meet? In a satellite high above the Earth? No. In a gleaming headquarters in Metropolis? No. Oh, I know! 
Underwater grotto. Not exactly. The Sonic Society can be heard right here on this radio station. Oh, but when? Just visit www.sonicsociety.org, click on the air, and check the affiliate stations for local airtimes. The Sonic Society. Sounds like a great excuse to curl up with somebody, uh, special. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. Yes, boss. This is General Keys of the Interstellar Naval Command. Do not panic. There's a podcast out there that you will need to download and listen to. It's called Planet Retcon, and you can find this podcast at planetretcon.com. Anybody not listening to this podcast will be found and dealt with. Planet Retcon? Never heard of it. I have. It's a great new show. Sci-fi broadcast done in the style of the radio shows of the 1950s. Funny situations, engaging stories... And I hear the main character of the Stargate Cafe is voiced by a really handsome guy. Stargate Cafe? Yeah, it's kind of like Cheers in space. But Stargate Cafe is the name of this place. Do you think we could... No, that's impossible. Download the latest episode of PlanetRecon.com today at PlanetRecon.com. All rights reserved. We now return to the Sonic Society. Serena? What are you doing up at this hour? Many pictures of many words. What magic is this? TV. But that's just many pictures of one world. This world. So fast they live. Okay, focus now. What is this? It's a mother giving birth. Oh, this is giving birth? It's how humans do it. No, I no do that. But you're a oh. reptile. You lay eggs. Oh, no. We give life birth like that. You do? Oh. I cannot do that. Eight times. I cannot do that. You have your magic. Doesn't that help? That's good. Push. The head is I no do that. Settle down. I know it oh. looks frightening oh. now. You do that? Three times. At what? No, over six years. It took six years of pain. No, no, three different times Uh, over six years. I know do that, Earth Mother. I know do that. Give me the remote. There. Rena, Rena, look at me. Look at me. I I don't understand. Haven't you ever seen a live birth before? I too young to know such things. I am only 100. No, but you must be old enough to get... What is it you call it? Retete Gorgana. I mean, you know about making babies, you and whoever is the baby's father? Oh, no. No love, mate. Just magic. I was only one left. Mother hit me during final battle. Then evil red priest, they dragged me and captured me. I only Retete Gorgana because I lost one. (laughs) Really? So it just happened? I know a lot of girls who've said it, but this is the first time I actually believe it. I only want hundred. I am afraid of that pain, Earth Mother. Shh, here, let me hold you. I'm scared of pain. I'm scared. Shh, just let me hold you. There's nothing to fear. I'm here, Rena. I won't let anything hurt you. Don't cry. You're 100 years old. You're a big girl, dragon. I'm not the same here on Earth Mother's world. I like Alicia. What? Here, I like Alicia. Only three. One hundred is three. Oh, my God. You're just a baby yourself. I scared Earth Mother. I know not. I know not how. No, no. Don't cry. There's nothing we can do about it now. We'll just have to practice. We have two weeks. Practice? Lamaze. It's what I used. You learn to breathe. Like this. Watch. Now you try. Oh my god! Oh my god! Ain't that wood? Well, besides setting the bookcase on fire. Oh. There, there, that got it. Hi, oh, sorry, your mother. <coughs> don't worry. <coughs> I don't think Lamaze breathing is for you. Sorry, your mother. Earth mother? <coughs> Why have you started calling me Earth mother? This place you call Earth. You mother to me. I'm not your mother. I'm your friend. There's a difference. Difference? What? The difference is... The difference is I know what being a mother is, and you don't. I'm just your Earth friend. Oh, so you just friend. Hmm. 
uh, just friend who cared for me when I was sick. Right. Mother cared for me when I was sick, like you. Well, I mean... I... And you let me burn up TV to baby breathe. Mother would have done that. Of course, but... You I... feed me, hold me, uh, sing to me until I sleep, no? Yeah, that's true. You scratch back where I cannot reach. Mother do that too. Now, Rena. You love Rena. Care for Rena, no? Rena. You love or no love, Rena? Of course I love you, Rena. So, Earth Mother love Rena? Same as Dragon Mother love Rena on Droconia? You no? are a sneaky child. I know child. I'm 100 years old. You're a sneaky 100 year old child. Oh my god, I've turned into my mother. Again. Hmm? Ugh, nothing. It's time to go to bed. But I'm not tired. I want to see more pictures of Earth World. A thirty dollar dollar. No. But I'm not tired. You wanted to. No, do as your mother says. Really? Yes. Hmm. Thank you, Earth Mother. Mm, you're welcome, Dragon Daughter. I'm concerned that you haven't been able to keep your appointments. Please call me, even at home. Talk to you soon. Ms. Laura Miles? Hi, this is Cheryl Bennett of Bandit's Meats. Did you say 20 sides of beef or was that just one? I'm just calling because my nephew was on his first day and might have gotten the number switched. I mean 20 sides of beef. That is 10 cows. <laughs> just checking. Have a nice day. That's been its wholesale meats for four nine seven eight two. Hey girl, what's up with the forty rolls of film? Is this what you've been doing with yourself? I went to the VA dance again last weekend. You didn't show again, and I was all alone. And yeah, 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 I know. I shouldn't have, but I ended up on Conagher's point again. But he was so cute. <laughs> Tell you the details when you come by. I'll have your slides developed by two. Lauren, this is your mother. I'm very upset at the moment. Dr. Michelle called, and she was... Hi, Mother. Oh, I was just exercising. Jogging. I'm up to five miles twice a day, taking wonderful pictures. You should see them. I'll have a set made especially for you. Oh, oh what was that? Oh, nothing. Just, just a TV show. I know you haven't heard from me in two weeks. No, I know you've been worried. What kind of TV show? Oh, something on the Animal Channel. Oh, hold on, Mom. Rena, honey, stop playing with your lunch and eat it. Sorry, Earth Mother. Mom? Yes, 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 yes. Everything's all right. I'm having the time of my life. Hold on, Mother. Rena, no dessert until you finish your lunch. Finish your lunch. Do not talk back to me. Eat your lunch. Rena, remember Ms. Manners. Sorry, Earth Mother. Oh, oh children. Oh, oh, what children? On, oh, that children on the animal planet. What? Dr. Michelle called you? No, Mom, Mom, I know, I know. No, Mom, I'm seeing her this afternoon. Yes, I made the appointment myself. Yes, Mother, I'll show up. Mother, I have to go. No, I'm not avoiding you. I just have to catch dessert. I'll call about my station. Love and kisses. Bye. And that's why I feel better and stop my sessions, Dr. Michelle. I see, but still, I wish you would return my call sooner. Well, that's why I'm here, Jan. I was immature about it. You at least deserved a face-to-face -face explanation. I'm sorry I had to finally call your mother. I was worried about you. I understand. Oh, of course I understand. Understanding is something I've had to do a lot lately. I've come to understand a lot. So what do you think about my little quiet revolution? I think you're headed in the right direction. Fantastic. That's wonderful. I knew you'd think that way. Just today, while I was jogging the second five miles, I thought to myself, Dr. Michelle is a really good psychiatrist, and I really mean that. I truly do. And I thought to myself while jogging the second five miles that Dr. Michelle is really a good psychiatrist and would understand the change that I'm making and would approve of it. I really did think that while I was jogging the second five miles. I really did because I really believe in you and believe that you believe in me. It's faith, you know, having faith. I really think that's what it is, you know? 
Faith is good, but I think you're taking the change a bit fast. I'm surprised that you haven't had any problems. Well, I lied to my mother. I've been off the medication for only a month now. And how are you feeling today? Oh, fine, fine, fine. Oh, oh, I took some great pictures at the playground yesterday. There was this virgin field of bright white daisies, and I took... Daisies in the fall. I know. That's why I couldn't pass it up. It was a perfect calendar shot. There were hundreds of butterflies and bunnies, and the sun was warm, and the children were laughing nearby. It was an epiphany, Jan. And then the day before that, there was this magical lagoon and all the lily pads and perfectly cute little frogs on them and dragonflies were buzzing around. Am I going too fast for you? A bit. It's been almost a year since you took that many notes. Well, you are a bit excited. Well, wouldn't you be? I mean, I've had the best scenes to photograph these past three weeks. Five miles a day I jog around the park and turn the corner and there it is. A different view. A different view every time. Isn't that amazing? A different view every In time. In the same place. Yeah, funny about that. But I paid no mind. Life's too short to wonder why. Just experience before you die. Ha! I might even be a poet too. I've been writing a lot in my journal, hours every day, and then I think about what I write while I jog five miles a day. Pictures. Oh, I brought them. Here, see for yourself. Hmm. I had a set of eight by tens made for my mother. I know. I'll have a set made for you. My cousin Mary owns a photo shop, and I get really good deals all the time. Any time that I want them. Really good deals. Do you need any photos developed? I can get you a good deal. All you have to do is say so, and it's done. Here they are. Aren't they good? See? See them all? See? Aren't they just great? I think it's my time, you know? It's just my time to do really good. I love this time of life, Dr. Michelle. It's like being reborn, you know? When you have a quiet revolution. <laughs> oh, I love mm, life. I see. Didn't they just turn out fantastic? I've already sent off a whole set to Mother's Day magazine. Rachel Stein, the main editor, loved my previous work, and I know she'll love these. I have a great idea. It's never been done from a mother's point of view, you know. That's what Rachel really likes, is my mother's point of view. Uh, Lauren. It's Lauren. a moon calendar. A whole calendar of different full moon shots. I think that kind of calendar would sell. People love the moon. Mothers love. Lovers becoming mothers. Oh, Mr. Moon, moon, bright and shiny moon, won't you please shine down on me? Ha! A moon calendar. What do you think about my moon calendar idea? Moon calendar? I'm going to call it nightlight. I've been shooting the moon, the full moon, for the last year, in every season. I'm sure it'll sell. So what do you think about the pictures? Lauren, I want you to go back on your medication today. No! I'm feeling the best I have in years. I don't want to spoil it. It's like, it's, it's magic! As your doctor, I'm ordering you to. Your mood swings are increasing, and I'm worried that a new problem could be developing. Why? Because of the pictures? I'm afraid you're showing classic signs of degeneration. Classic? You just don't like my style of photography. More like hallucinations, Lauren. How am I hallucinating? Lauren... There's nothing on these photos. No bunnies, no lily pads, no daisies. Nothing but three empty swings. Give them back. Here, look. See? This one of the dragonfly and her baby's flying behind. See? Oh, I had to be quick to get that one. Look at all the colors. Oh, all I see is an empty playground and three empty swings and Lauren, the photos in black and white. Impossible. It's right there. Don't you see it? The no, dragonfly. Lauren. But but it's no, there. I don't. It's there. I see it. It's there. Lauren, you please sit down. Let's talk about it. No, I'm not going crazy again. I'm past Lauren, all that. Lauren, you're in denial. You mean I'm going crazy again? No, I saw it. It's right there in the photos. I tell you, I saw it all. I saw Lauren, it all. Lauren, please no, come I back. Don't leave. I I told you no more television. Rena? Lauren? Rena! Lauren? Oh, mother! What are you doing here? Who is Rena? What are you doing here? I came over after Dr. Michelle called. She said you ran out of her office. Who's Rena? No one in particular. Uh, cat. I got a cat. Last week I got a cat and I named her Rena. I can have a cat. It's a free world. I can have a cat. You told a cat. No more television. I always have to. She learned to work the remote. It drives me crazy sometimes. I leave and I come home to Rena watching television. She learned to work the remote. Why are you looking at me that way? I'm telling the truth. I am telling the You're truth. You're lying to me again. Dr. Michelle was right. You need to get back on your medication. No, thank you. I'm feeling fine. Look at you, honey. You're so pale and shaking. It's... It's just like before, like your other breakdown. Come on, we're going to the hospital now. Let go of me. I've got other things to do. No, we're going to the hospital now. Get out! 
your 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 eyes are wild looking. Get out! You need help, Lauren. I I love you, but you need help. <laughs> Rena, where are you, Rena? Here, yeah, Earth Mother. Your mother scared me, so I hide. You're not the only one that's scared. What's happening to me? I'm told I'm seeing things that aren't there. I'm freaking out. I just roared at my mother. <laughs> I just roared at my mother. Rena, I think I'm going crazy. It is magic, I think. I took photos of bunnies and serene lagoons, but no one can see that. Maybe you have dragon's eye. You see my world in yours. How come I feel like I'm going crazy when you're the one who's Ratete Gorgana? I, I do know, as babies near birth, their magic grows, affects all, but we dragons can block it, and you are no dragon. Oh, wonderful. Oh, sorry, oh, I do not mean to hurt you. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. At least now I know why. Wow, I'm hungry. I feel like I could eat a horse. Horse? Too pretty to eat. <laughs> that was a... But pig, cow, or sheep, or mule, or ostrich. Funny bird. I saw on TV. Never mind, Rena. Oh, sorry, Earth Mother. It's okay. <laughs> Should I expect more of these magical side effects? Maybe, maybe not. Thanks for the concrete answer. I'm sorry. I not know. Oh, no, don't cry. I'm sorry. No, I know how you feel. It's the hormones. Damn all men. They just want to have fun and we get pregnant. Yes. Damn them all. Damn them to hell. May they burn forever in the fires of draconian volcano. You go, girl. You scald them where it hurts. <laughs> what we do not at this magic hormone shit? Ice cream. What is that? Delicious. That's what it is. Delicious magic hormone food. Mmm. Mm. Ice cream. Wonderful sweet ice cream. Mmm. Smooth, cold, and sweet. Delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. We have nothing like this on Draconia. Ice cream. Invented by men, but it's made from mother's milk. Must have been a cold mother. <laughs> <laughs> cold mother? That's funny, Rena. Cold mother. Oh, my God, my mother. I have to call and apologize. I can't believe I roared at her. Hey, do you think I'll grow wings, too? Mm, do not think so. I do not see noobs. I think magic, just in your mind. Mm, mind over matter. That's what my husband Tom used to always say. Oh! Oh, I get headaches. Well, you ate too fast again. Hold your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Like this. Yeah, hold it there for a while, because if you eat cold ice cream too fast, it freezes your brain. Hey, I can't. Huh? Hey, I can't. I can't understand you. Move your tongue. Huh? I can't understand you. Mm, I can't understand you. Move your tongue. Headache gone. Time for flavor 45. No, I think you've had enough. I'm still hungry for great equalizer. No, you're going to get sick. <laughs> Do not steam at me. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can pig out. Well, all the time. Ow. Earth mother, you freeze brain too? No. Now I'm suddenly so tired and my head hurts. But I'm still hungry. Then let's get something more nutritious into you. I think I still have that side of beef in the freezer. Come on, let's go home. Earth mother... You do not look well. I don't feel it either. Let's just go home. Oh, Rena. All right, Mother. Stella? Oh, Dr. Michelle, how is Lauren? Oh, she's sleeping right now. She required several stitches from her fall, but there shouldn't be any scars. She looked so wilted when I saw her this afternoon. She wasn't herself. Well, how's that? She warded me. An unnatural sound. It's because she went off her medication, isn't it? Her manic episodes have returned, haven't they? Just like after the accident when we lost them all. Well, yes and no. That doesn't help much. Stella, you know her manic episodes. The intense exhilaration and the following depression was her post-traumatic stress. It's how the mind compensates for a tragic incident. And I believe we worked through that. However, Stella, I'm coming to believe that Lauren has another problem. Schizophrenia. Uh, Possible. For her age, I would agree with you. It usually shows up in early adulthood. 
However, it is a chemical imbalance of the brain. No. Can that happen because she's going to stop taking her medicine? No. However, the physical brain trauma from the accident itself could have effects that we haven't considered. Only more tests can tell. I do have a question, though. Who is this girl, Rena, she keeps mumbling about in her sleep? I have no idea. As I remember, none of her children were named that. No one in our family has that name either. And she really doesn't have many friends anymore. When she was at the ice cream parlor, people said she was sitting alone and talking to an empty chair as if someone was actually there. Oh, Dr. Michelle, what do we do now? I've had her sedated. She needs rest. Time to put things back together. And then I'm putting her back on her medications. She also needs to start therapy as well. I would like to keep her in the ward for the rest of the week. I'll need your signature. Oh, yes, certainly. Will she get better? Medically, I can't say yes or no. Personally, I hope so. As much as you do. We just have to take it one step at a time and hope for the best. Earth Mother, help me. Rena, I can't see you. There's too much fog. Where am I? Tombstones without names. Thousands of them. I felt for pains, Lauren. They come from the shadows. Who's that in the red cloaks? Warlocks and witches. No, priests. The red priests of Draconia. They have found me, Lauren. They know I am Retete Gorgana. No banishment. Bavek Vavamuth. No Bavek Vavamuth. Oh. Rina, it's oh. Conagher's Point in the full moon. That's where oh. you are, isn't it? See me? I am stretching out my hand. Feel my belly, Earth Mother. Babies already help me. Oh. Priests trying to hurt the babies. Oh, oh. No, no, not again. Straps? Hospital straps. No, no, not again. Untie me. Untie me. Nurse! Nurse! Lauren, 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 it's the middle of the night. You must be quiet. How long have I been here? Sweetheart, calm down. You're safe. I've been by your side the whole time. Mom, why am I strapped down? You've been having convulsions. They had to, to protect yourself. How long have I been here? I think I should call the nurse. No, no, no more drugs. How long have I been here? Four days. The moon is full. Look out the window, it's full. I have to go. Unstrap me. Lauren, I can't do that. But I have to be with Rena. She's having her babies. Unstrap me. Please, dear, please, dear, calm down. Mother! Lauren! You broke that hand strap. Mother! You've torn your foot straps, too. Your insurance doesn't cover that. You have two choices. I don't like ultimatums, especially now. Give me the car keys now. Or... Or what, Lauren Katie Miles, or what? Hmm. Yes, that's how she did it. What? What are you doing to me? I... I feel fuzzy. Give me the car keys what? or drive me. What? I need your help. Oh. Only I, you can help me. But... Mom, please, I need you. Oh, Lauren. Oh. Oh. This way, Mom. I'm oh. coming. Oh. There she is, Mom. Oh. Rena, I'm here. Earth Mother. I've been waiting. That's Rena? Oh. But she's real oh. and pregnant. Oh. The, ba- the babies oh. are coming, aren't they? What do I do? I scared, Mother. I scared. It's all right, baby. I was too my oh. first time. But we have each oh. other. Do it like we practice. Oh, gonna oh. have a baby here? Here oh. on a cliff? Oh. I have to become me. That's fine. Lauren, we need to take this young woman to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> Mom? I don't think they'd admit her. Oh, my God, Lauren. What have you gotten yourself into now? You were saying, Mother? She's so beautiful. Earth Mother, how did you learn the dragon song? What? Mm, no, your little mind trick? During our dream walk, I gather that's what it was. Oh, you faint. They take you away. I wait at home. Do you not come back? I thought I was alone. I had to come out. I had to come out where we first met. So I can sing. Oh! I would have been here sooner, but I was tied up. <laughs> Lucky for me, I still had some of your magic and your strength. They... They come, Earth Mother. Look at the moon, Rena. Keep your eyes on the moon. My magic is failing. 
They come, Earth Mother. I know it hurts, sweetheart, but don't think about the pain. Just think about the babies. I scared. I'm here with you. Now focus on the moon like we practiced. Don't think about the pain. Just let them come. Just think about touching your babies and holding them. Let them come. Give them life, Rena. <laughs> Beautiful, dear. It's so Come on, dragon great. daughter. Just a few more. Oh, one and a black one. Earth mother, what would you, did you make her remember? I, I made her remember her birthing me. But I forgot that she was on drugs at the time. Oh, oh, so cute, so sweet. Oh, Gucci, Gucci, go. And they're already stretching their wings. What is that noise? What is this tingling? The magic is rejuvenating. Their birth add to our protection. Pain lessens now. Oh, red one, Rina. Good. Only a few more to go. Oh, Rina. Oh, Rina. Oh, this one's pink and a pure white one. And oh, oh, I love one more, Rina. One more. It's the same coloring as you. One more, Rena. Oh, and the last one is silver green. They're beautiful. Beautiful. They are, Rena. Or should I say, Queen Mother? <laughs> is this more hormones? No, it's just a mother's love. Oh, how do you tell the boys from the girls? Oh, it doesn't matter. You're all sweet little dragons. Yes, you are, my baby, baby, babies. Yes. Uh, Lauren, they're looking there around me. Why? Rena? Well, dragon magic works well with her personal aura. In magic sense, her aura produces sweet, nutritious nectar, like mother's milk. At least that's what it smells like from here. Oh, Mom? Oh, yeah, sugar boy. <laughs> they're licking the... Well, uh, you got magic in you, and they're, uh, oh, nursing. Oh, how delightful. Well, let Grammy just give my children some jammy. Yes, you're so oh. sweet. Yes, Earth you are. Mother. Earth Mother, has dragon magic uh, made her ill? No, Rena. It's a family thing. My dragon queen, meet great grandma. Yeah, your grandma mom's yummy yum, yes, you are. Oh, they're so cute. Can I keep them on the weekend? What's happening now? Oh, way home. Gate opened. The full moon is opening up. Into doorway home. Home? But home is here. This is not our world, Earth Mother. They need to fly. You're leaving now? But you've just had eight babies. Our babies. Yes, I see your thing. Do not be sad, Earth Mother. This is not our world. Gate will close. We must go now. But what about the red priests? When I was alone, I could not stand against them. Now that we are nine, their chains can no longer bind us here. But you can't just leave me. Not my choice. We need to fly. Thank you, Earth Mother. Don't go. Please don't go. We must. Gate will only be open for so long. But I don't want to be alone. You will always be in our think, in our heart. But... Look at the moon. Look at the moon. No, don't go. Please, don't go. Look at the moon. Look at the moon. Look at the moon, Lauren. It's pulsing and beating like a heart. No shadows. <laughs> my family. I see my family in the moon's heart. The moon is a mirror. The mirror reflects the wishes of your heart. And they will always be there, as we will. Oh, the magic land of love. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. My family, they're happy, Mom. Yes, they are. Bye-bye, dears. Bye-bye. But they're fading away. Don't go. Oh, just say goodbye, dear, just for now. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, my children. I love you. Goodbye for now. Mom? Mom, wake up. You've been sleeping here all night? Oh, uh, how are you feeling today, dear? Hmm, a lot better. Dr. Michelle came by while you were asleep. I'm getting released. Really? Into your custody, if that's okay. 
Can I stay with you for a while? Oh, of course, sweetheart. I just think we have a lot to catch up on. Oh, I would love that. I want to keep taking pictures, though. That's fine, dear. Just focus on your project and you'll go very far. Mom, I want to thank you. I know you were worried about me, but it was a personal journey that I had to take. I'll be honest with you, dear. I had my doubts. But I knew I just had to let you fly. Good or bad. Really? You really believe that? No. But a mother just hopes for the best and believes that twice as strong. Thanks, Mom. What are you thinking? Well, you have a funny look on your face. Your forehead's wrinkled like you're worried about something. What is it? <laughs> Because your forehead is wrinkled like you're worried about something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Mom? Well, I was just having the strangest dream before you woke me up. It's not that it's a problem or anything, but it just troubles me that I don't fully remember it. It's so shadowy. Shadow of a dream. Oh, Ugh, never mind. What's that you're humming? Oh, it's just a tune I learned. In the shadow of a dream, I see my world. You've been listening to the Texas Radio Theater Company's production of Dragon Song, written by D.B. Humphreys, directed by Luann Chapman, and featuring the voice talents of Connie Crow, David Gant, Christine Lafferty, Rod Wayne, Bob Erickson, Bernadette Mugel. Kathy Funston, Stephanie Knapp, Bill Shelton. The music was provided by Kyle McConnell. Sound effects were created by Libby Milliron, Rich Frolic, and Luann Chapman. Additional writing by Rich Baker, Shannon McManus, Rich Frolic, and Rod Wayne. The program was produced and engineered by Richard Frolic and the Texas Radio Theater Company. I'm Elliot Gilbert. Thanks for listening, and have a very good night. I'm Jack Ward. The Sonic Society will return in a moment with a conversation with radio drama writer and founder of Texas Radio Theater, Richard Froelich. Sonic. Hey, Jack, is there something wrong with Andrew? Where do I begin? Sonic. Well, he's acting strange. Strange? Well, stranger than usual. Sonic. He's been listening to this new radio show. It seems to have affected his mind. Sonic. Shouldn't we take him to the hospital or something? We could, but he'd just toss him in a rubber room. That would remove him from society. Oh, society. Okay, this is getting kind of creepy. Sonic. That's better. He's harmless enough, as long as he gets to hear that radio show. Sonic. What's it called again? Sonic. I can't remember. Society. Listen every week to the Sonic Society. Check sonicsociety.org for local times. And we're back, and I'm Jack Ward, and this is the Sonic Society. And here on the phone we have Richard Froelich from Texas Radio Theater. How are you today, Richard? I'm fine. Good, good. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. It's, uh, it's really exciting for me to be able to talk with you because... What we're doing and try to do on the Sonic Society, you've been doing for some time. Tell me about the history of Texas Radio. Oh, well, uh, that's nice of you to say. Um, I've just been doing this for, well, since about 2001. We, well, I have to backtrack from there. Um, we started as, as a group in around 2000, 
Um, I was uh, a little bit bored with, with some of the stuff I was doing uh, as far as the, uh, the job that puts food on the table. Um, I do vocational videos and uh, flash animation, and um, I've always been a creative person. So I started sending stuff to my uh, old college radio station, WXCI, in Danbury, Connecticut. And um, I was just doing that for fun, and uh, I decided to see if I could do that same thing locally. And I started writing some radio scripts, and uh, it's it's a it's a long story actually. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about what the writing process is like for you. Uh, what stuff do you like to write the most? What kind of genre are you most interested in? What really grabs you? I love all sorts of genres. Um, I have to say that my common denominator is a little bit of humor. Ah. I like to insert, infuse, like to uh, just bring a little bit of humor to whatever story I'm telling, whether it's a horror story, uh, science fiction, a straight drama, um, or a comedy. Well, you got to have humor and comedy. And some... Uh, genres lend to better comedy than others. I, I know I'm noting specifically Cliff Proton. It's great to be able to poke fun at the old-fashioned sci-fi stuff. Well, that never was my intention to poke fun at. I, I, you know, it's it's not a parody, really. It's uh, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Poke fun. I do say, you know, blown to atoms. I do use some old expressions that were used in the in the 30s serials and stuff like that. But uh, I'm thinking more of a tribute. I'm just having fun with with the, the characters there. I think um, uh, yeah, I, I I'm very uh, let's see what's the word. I I don't like to parody the great work that is done that was done before us. I mean, it, it is some of it like old time movies. Uh, some of the the scenes are are kind of laughable now, given given society and the way we look at things nowadays. But um, they 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 were the trailblazers. So. Yeah. So now, yeah. Tell me then, what got you drawn into radio drama, radio theater in the first place? What do you love to listen to? Well, um, I have to say, my two greatest influences were Fire Sign Theater and Pink Floyd. I didn't realize Pink Floyd did radio drama. They never did. But <laughs> listen to their album. They do paint audio pictures. They absolutely do. And that's, that's that's what you have to do. You have to create emotions. You have to create. Um, you you have to take somebody on a journey. And uh, I'm sounding really cheesy now. <laughs> no, I I'm with you 100. percent But uh, that's that's those are. Uh, that, that's what drew me into it. I've never see this is I've just discovered recently audiobooks. Right. And I'm catching up on all the books I was supposed to read in high school <laughs> and college. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've never been much of a reader. I I read to get information. I research. I don't read for pleasure. I never really got into it. But I'm just having a fascinating time um, listening. To J.K. Rowling, listening to Stephen King, listening to uh, Kurt Vonnegut, um, all these great authors. Um, I just listened to The Great Gatsby. Never re supposed to read it in high school. Never did. Enjoyed it thoroughly. And I've, I've never been a reading type person, but I do have a, a, a vivid imagination. So, in a way, audio theater is what would have gotten me involved. I mean, it would have, would have engaged me. This is my, in a, in a way, that's how my brain is wired, I guess. It's just audio theater is, is my preferred medium, if you will. I, I don't know if you encountered this, but did you ever get these records that had stories on them, like Star Trek and, and, and other things? Like, uh, um, were you familiar with any of those? Are you kidding? Absolutely. You, know, when you were growing up? Absolutely. I, my parents, every year, bought me, I had an album of Buck Rogers, mm -hmm. I had an album of Flash Gordon, I had an album of the original first four episodes of Superman, I had an album of Star Trek, some a bizarre Star Trek stories. Exactly, yes. Um, and um, those things were available. Walt Disney put them out. Um, I think there was another group, Peter Pan Records, I think, was big back then. Yep. Then there was another one, I, can't, I think Rankin Bass, the folks that did The Hobbit and the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think they did a couple of audio offerings, too. So 
uh, for audio geeks like us, there was still stuff around. That's right. And and we, um, our imaginations were, were still uh, <laughs> exercised. I, exercised. There you go. No, I, it's, what's interesting is I think back, not only did I have those, but I also ended up using a tape recorder to record my favorite shows at night oh. and listen to them again so and look, again. You're, you're talking to somebody right now who, uh, when Star Wars was put on HBO. We didn't have HBO, but we had the cable box. Right. So the audio came through, but the picture was scrambled. You're talking to somebody <laughs> who taped that oh, well, that's... audio and listened to it over and over again. Because <laughs> we didn't have a VCR back then. No, of course the not. Rich people had VCRs then. Yeah. We couldn't afford HBO, but, um, yeah, so... That's, I, I, I don't think, know that is how that fits into what's going on. I but, think uh, we're finding a, very much a, a common denominator here, Rich. Yeah, it's uh, the other thing. Yeah, I did make my own radio shows then too. I don't want to find those. The tapes are around, but they're locked up somewhere. <laughs> Safe within the vault. Yeah, I can't bear to throw them away. No, but I can't bear to listen to them either. If you know <laughs> what I mean. Tell me about your writing process. What what inspires you to write now? I, it's I don't know. I just do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just. Uh, I, I think that's something that's. Can't answer that. I just write. I'm a writer. I, I take my experiences and I just, I guess I'm just a storyteller at heart. I'm a creative person and uh, when something uh, makes me go, hmm, I, I kind of want to put that hmm in somebody else's head. If, is, does that sound, did no. I win anything? That's my no, final answer. That sounds, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I, tell me, what's your favorite script to date? Do you have one that you really love? The script that I wrote or a script I've heard? A script that you've written. A script I've written. Hmm. What's my favorite so far? I think um, Garbage Fairies was fun to write. Well, to answer your question, <laughs> I'll come up with an idea, <laughs> and I'll kind of think through it, kind of a what-if scenario. Usually that's what starts it, some kind of what-if women... Uh, controlled the moon, you know, something like that. Uh, sure. Um, and then that'll kind of germinate in my head for a while, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just think about it, and I'll write down some notes. I'll do a little bit of research here and there if it, if it's something that requires research. Like for instance, garbage fairies. I came up with this idea that now that everything is so sprawled and urbanized. The fairies aren't gone. They've just adapted. So <laughs> the fairies now live in vacant lots. Oh. But they want the lots to be kept unkempt so that humans don't bother them. So they use their fairy magic to control the city leaders or whoever owns the lot to keep them all garbaged up. But this little girl stumbles in there and manages to get some fairy dust and therefore is not affected by the fairies and then convinces her dad that that place should be cleaned up and turned into a park, and somehow the fairy dust works on him too, and these fairies are really upset because now they can't stop these humans from cleaning up their their little garbage area. So they have to be moved. So that's that's how that story evolved. And so I'll start, I'll start with a, an idea, and then I'll sit on it for about a year, and then uh, give myself a deadline and... <laughs> I like the twist in that because it's sort of, you know, don't don't recycle, don't clean something up, you know, cuz hey, they don't want you to clean it up. No, that's their home. That's right. right. You're displacing, <laughs> you're displacing fairy people. Yes. See, I guess that's the old um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder thing. Yes. That's and and I think, you know, that that's something that I found in the, in the in the shows that you sent me that there there's there seems to be a bit of a a traveling theme in, in your stuff, even in a slight way, that beauty is the in the eye of the beholder. My name is Jack Ward, and we're in the Sonic Society. Coming up from Dream Realm Enterprises, episode 14 of Robots of the Company. Dream Realm Enterprises presents... Welcome back to Bob Moore! 
where things have become unbearably tense. And that's just our annual round of contract negotiations with the network, right, Chip? That's right, Shorty. The scintillating sticking point this time being the tested temperature of the water in our lavish luxury jacuzzis. But let's get straight back to the action. Fire! Fire! We got them pinned down! Concentrate your fire! At my command, unleash hell! Take that! And that! And that! You're going down! You're toast! No retreat! No surrender, sir! Fire! Take them down! We have them! Let's show them the meaning of war! I will annihilate you! I will exterminate without mercy! I will wipe out every particle of your existence! I love the smell of mayhem in the morning. It smells like victory. Cease fire! Cease fire! Wait for the smoke to clear. We have to pull back. Stop firing! Stop firing! Right, everyone gather around. I'm going to get to the bottom of our saboteur problem. I've been digging around in Putch's office, and I found the lie detector machine he uses for when we hand in our expenses and overtime requests. And I'm going to use it on everyone here. We'll soon find out who the culprit is. You want us all to take a lie detector test? I certainly do. How do we know it's not you, GD? Well, I'll take the lie detector test, too. That way you'll all know I can be trusted. Sounds fair enough, GD. Why don't you go first? No problem. You'll have to activate the polygraph machine. Attach the wires to my solenoids. Press the green button marked Liar Liar Pants on Fire. And then you can ask me any question you want. Okay, I've attached the wires. Now all I have to do is throw the switch, right? That's right. Okay, here we go, Pinocchio. Ah, that stung. Well, they say the truth hurts, GD. What just happened? The machine malfunctioned. It's been sabotaged. That's mightily convenient. It certainly lets you off the hook. K custodiat ipsos custodes, GD. Who watches the watchman, eh? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to watch Bot War. Blast it. This saboteur has really annoyed me now. I've obviously come up against a formidable enemy. Cunning and devious mind. Professor Moriarty to my Sherlock Holmes. Well, I know you're out there. You can run, but you can't hide. Chip, that was extraordinary! Have we ever witnessed a more brutal exchange of fire in the history of Bot I don't think we have, Shorty. And for a fact, I know that we've never seen such a close-range battle take place between two teams in which, unbelievably, not a single shot hit the target. Can you believe that? They miss every single time. They're undoubtedly the worst shots I've ever seen, Chip. And they may be the worst navigators, too. That's right. We ought to remind our audience at home that this incredible battle started when both teams accidentally walked into each other while they were both looking in entirely the wrong direction. They bumped right into each other, Chip, which meant that they had absolutely no choice but to commence firing whilst they dive for cover. What fantastic entertainment they're providing for us today. Halt! Who goes there? Oh, we're just out for a friendly stroll. We're not Team A, if that's what you're thinking. I have been ordered to be on the lookout for three robots or droids. You are three robots or droids. Yes, but, uh, these are not the droids you're looking for. Yes, they are. Honestly, they're not. Are. Not. Are, too. All right, that's enough of that. And one more thing. Yes? While we were talking, 
One of my team slipped away, found your ammo dump, reloaded his weapon, and is pointing it at your head right now. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Not. Is. Not. Some people just never listen. Good shot, Payload. Well, men, seems like we've scored a little victory at last. Excelsior, move in. Kill them. Maybe I spoke too soon. Yes, Captain Putsch. You've walked right into my trap. Sphinx, you sneak. I shall obliterate the enemy with my ultimate weapon. Oh boy, look at the size of that thing. We're history. You will be exterminated with extreme prejudice. And then, the whole galaxy will know the true might of Excelsior. I suppose you're wondering why I've gathered you all here today. But you haven't gathered us all here, GD. We were here already, engrossed in the program. You only said that. Because you think it makes you sound like Hercule Poirot. Look, who's been conducting this investigation, eh, fathead? Me or you? Oh. Well, uh, a point taken. Right. I've been tracking down our saboteur, and I've found him. Really? Then who is it? If I hadn't missed some vital clues early on in my investigation, I would have caught him sooner. You see, first there was the clue of the... Yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Don't take all day about it, GD. Just tell us who it is before the show comes back on. Yeah, GD. Tell us who it is. The suspense is killing me. Or maybe it's these suspenders I'm wearing. <sighs> uh, I don't know why I even bother. Okay, then. The saboteur, who's been willfully damaging equipment aboard the Titan One, is... Want my armor? Get in there! Want my fair! Bundles. Shush, Bundles. GD is about to tell us something very important, and we want him to get it over with as soon as possible. No, no. Bundles is the saboteur. What? The baby bot is your master criminal? Are you nuts? Yes. I mean, no, I'm not nuts. The culprit really is Bundles. And he's not a master criminal. He's just been doing what comes naturally to a toddler. Particularly a combat bot toddler. He's been following in his father's footsteps. Breaking things, causing destruction, general mayhem. Well, that's one mystery solved. Well done, GD. Want my Armageddon bear? Want my Armageddon bear? Come here, Bundles. Have you been causing havoc aboard the Titan One? Who is a clever boy then? Who is a goochie goochie clever little baby bot then? Fire at them! Excelsior, fire! Engaging ultimate weapon. Oh no, this is it. It's curtains for us. Firing ultimate weapon. Now! Malfunction! Malfunction! Ultimate weapon will not fire! Matters! There's something blocking the blaster. You're right. I can see something stuck in there. Well, I suppose we'll have to call it a draw, Captain Sphinx. Yes, I suppose we will, Captain Putsch. That is, until we next meet on the battlefield. Yeah, till next time. So, Putsch... What's jamming Excelsior's ultimate weapon anyway? Hang on, let me just reach in here and, uh, yes, I've got it. Hutch, what's that? It looks like it's Bundle's Armageddon Bear. Armageddon Bear! Armageddon Bear! Daddy's got Armageddon Bear! Huh, he must have put it inside Excelsior's ultimate weapon and forgotten about it. <laughs> the saboteur strikes again. I don't... I think it was exactly the crime of the century, G.D. A bit anticlimactic, if you ask me. Well, I suppose you have a point. It's not exactly murder on the Orion Express, is it? 
But you know, that can be arranged. <laughs> Robots of the Company, episode number 211B, Thought War, part 2, written by Vince Skaden, starred in order of appearance, short shorty circuit, Jack Ward, Chip Malfunction, Andrew Dorfman, Punch, Joe Thomas, Payload, John Tatterjack, Target Bot, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Sphinx, Jim Barber, Excelsior, Ted Cray, Corporal Cannon Fodder, Sally Wiggett, GD, Ellie Hirschman, Zentron, Jeff Niles, Squeak, Sally Wiggett, and Bundles, Ted Gray. The title theme was written and composed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Firstcom. The associate producer was Kay Wu. The post-production editor, script editor, executive producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series, Robots of the Company, created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, is copyright 2005, Green Realm Enterprises, all rights reserved. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Green Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dregold.net. For more information, please email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. We can set your mind at ease by reporting that no Armageddon Bear toys were harmed during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time for an exciting excursion entitled Master Quiz 3000. This is the Creditor signing off, and thankful this bloated misadventure is finally over. This is all so exciting. It certainly is. Copyright Dream of Enterprises 2005. And that's this week's show. Thanks so much for participating in the Sonic Society. Join us next week as we travel the stellar highways and hyperspace passages with episode number three of the Arbiter Chronicles. Join us, won't you? The Sonic Society was produced and directed weekly by Andrew Dorfman and Jack Ward. Theme music by Sharon B. The Society originates from CKDU in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, which can be found on the web at www.ckdu.ca and is also rebroadcast through affiliated stations around Canada and the United States of America. Look for upcoming episodes and schedules for the Sonic Society through our website at www.sonicsociety.org. See you next week at this same time in the Society. Until then, I'm Jack Ward.